All right, so the topics we have for today is actually quite a few. You know, some of the stuff we already did, we're just going to go over them and then we're going to do some new, um, some new topics. But we're just about wrapping up on um, basic technical analysis, right? So what we've been learning is the basics on technical analysis, right? More like retail trader stuff, you know, beginner, kind of beginner, intermediate. You know, it's that that's the what you learn so far is gonna get you, I'd say, a quarter the way there, right? By the end of the day, the skills you learn so far is, is fundamental, is foundational, you know, and to learn the advanced stuff, you have to have what we've learned so far don't pack, right? Because it's just the basic stuff, right? So, like I said before, just a quick um, run over, right? Um, when you're trading the Forex market and you're about to look for a trade, you're basically adding up confluences to form a bias on which direction the market is about to go so you could execute your trade and make your trading decision right so just to touch on the basic stuff we learned so far right we have um support and resistance right we have trend trend lines which we're going to touch on today Right, multiple time frame analysis, um, quarterly figures. Um, also, yeah, market structure. Right, one, two, three, four. Let's say, um, we have trends. Let's say we have trends, right? And um, today we're going to do head and shoulders, just a basic um, pattern everybody else should probably know. I mean, all the advanced traders should know. It's just a basic, basic um, pattern, right? But it's common, you know, like if you have to um, study a lot of these, 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 these patterns, these triangle patterns and these um, double bottoms, double tops, if you've been doing any research, I would say the most useful one would be um, head and shoulders, right? Because it's basically similar to most of the time, like a um, breakout market structure or a trend line retest, right? And up next, we have um, Fibonacci, right? So after we, we, we finish it, um, trend lines and we finish with um, Fibonacci, right we're going to practice how to put all of these things together when you're analyzing a pair right and we will back test that and once we're finished with that then we could go into the stuff that um really matters right the stuff that really helps us get those um great trades right and then we're also going to touch on a little um trading psychology later down the line right so um Everything I just listed out here, maybe something's missing. Um, you should have these um, confluences. You should have an idea, you know, or at least master these confluences, right? You should know them, right? And it's up to you to go ahead and practice. When you're taught a lesson, when you, when you looked at a previous video, it's not for you to just look at it once. It's for you to take the knowledge and apply it, right? And gain experience and practice it, right? No. This is what makes you a trader, right? Because you want to be independent. You want to be able to analyze the market on your own and make your trading decisions, right? So you want, when I send you a trading signal, you could say, okay, this is why um, this trade is valid. You know, this is why we're taking this trade so that you would feel more confident in taking a trade and you're not just taking signals, right? So, um, here are the trend line rules, right? 
it's very similar to support and resistance, right? The trend lines are also known as dynamic support and resistance. So that, that simply means it's not just um, horizontal, right? The same rules apply. So um, you have to be, you have to master market structure in order to understand trend lines, right? So basically you have an uptrend, right? And the trend line is drawn from in an uptrend from the latest to um, higher lows, right? On an uptrend, the latest to higher lows. So if we draw this trend line like this, that is a late, that is, that is connecting the latest two higher lows, right? And how do you conform a higher low? Basically, a higher low is conformed when the market reaches this lowest point and then it creates a higher high, right? So it surpasses the previous high, which would be here. This would be the high, this would be the low, this would be the higher high, and this would be the higher low. So once the market surpasses this level, right? Which was the previous high, then we can confirm that this would be a higher low, right? Simple market structure. So, um, to draw a trend line, you um, you find the two latest higher lows, you connect it and you extend it out, right? Now, um, a lot of the time, what you might find is people drawing trend lines connected. Um, what may not be the the, the um the two latest higher lows right let's say it was something like this right you might have someone drawing a trend line like this right connecting the um the two previous lows no um yes in some context that might be a trend line but through um, tests and through experience and through previous mentorship from persons who were successful at trading, this trend line method that I have here is very effective, right? So if you have to connect the points which are not the um, two latest higher lows, then we could just consider that dynamic support and resistance, right? Dynamic support and resistance could be um, something like a triangle pattern, you know, just connecting the points where you see the market kind of um, reverse sharply, right? Or sometimes you connect a point that was not even a higher, um, higher, higher low, right? So let me see if I can find an example of dynamic support and resistance, right? So let's say, let me do, let me do, um, backtrack too much. Let's say you have something like this. You connect these arm lows and you connect these highs, right? This would be something like dynamic support and arm low systems. It doesn't apply, it doesn't respect our um, trend line rules, but the market still reacts to it, right? So that's something, that's a whole other um, topic we could um, attack, right? So yeah, in a downtrend, if valid to draw a valid trend line, you connect the two latest um, lower highs, right? So let's say, um, what would be the two latest lower highs? These, right? Because it's the two most recent lower highs, right? The high, the lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, right? Now essentially, very basic, very basic, but you have to practice and be able to identify these on your own, right? So essentially, while the market is moving, you have to be adjusting your trend line, right? So, it would, it would go something like this. Let's say, um, also you should, you know, you could back test, right? I used to back test a lot when I was learning. You simply hit the replay bar, you go back in time, right? 
on certain date, whatever date you want. And then um, you can press play and watch the market play out, right? Okay, so normally what somebody would do right here, they would draw a trend line like this, right? However, this would not be a trend line because this is not a higher high, right? This is not um, a higher low because the market didn't, didn't surpass this level right here. So that trend line would be invalid, right? However, um, you could draw a trend line like this because this is the um, high and this is a lower high right here, right? Because the market went like um, went like this, right? But anyways, um, oh, before I start back testing trend lines, I almost forgot this, right? Back to the trend line um concept. So the idea is, once the market comes back. For the third touch, along with the other confluences, that's when you execute the trade. So in this example, we're just gonna consider trend lines as our only confluence, right? So once the market comes back for the third touch, you would be anticipating, depending on um, the information you've gathered from the market, you would an be anticipating a break are a bounce, right? If it's a trend, if you're expecting the trend to reverse, then you'd be expecting um to break, right? Mm -hmm. If you're expecting the trend to continue, then you would be expecting a bounce, right? Now, um, let's say a confluence is aligned right here. When the market gets to the um to the trend line for the bounce, and you have um all the information you need to make the decision, you would take a buy. Right, you put your stop loss in a safe area just using trend line confluence. Your stop loss could be either below the trend line because you're not expecting the, um, the trend line to break, or your stop loss could be below the last low because um, you know the market is in an uptrend. So, we're not expecting the market to make um, lower lows, right? So, we're not expecting the markets to surpass this. Um, previous low right here, right? So the closer it is to the low, the less you have to risk, right? So that is for a bong scenario, right? And then your first target would usually be the previous high, right? You know, you can watch this over and take notes. Your first target would probably be the previous high and then your second target would either be open are headed towards the next um, support and resistance level, right? So um, that's how you would want to go long on a bounce scenario, right? A, a trend con continuation scenario. Now keep in mind that you know your trend line is not going to be your only confluence. It, it is not enough to make a trading decision, right? So let's say we're over here now and um, for, the, for, for um, making a decision when the market is in a downtrend, we wait for the market to come back for the third touch of the trend line, right? So once it makes the lower low and it comes back for the third touch, along with some other confluences, you would enter on that third touch. So just like a quick example, here we have one, um, the third touch of a trend line. Two, we go have like um, sup a support and resistance level here, right? Because like I previously stated before, when the market forms a, a, a support and resistance level is when um, it has a sharp, a sharp turn in the market, right? A, a significant move, like a peak or a valley, right? And that would be a, a level. And you know, once that level is broken, once the floor, once um, support is broken, support is at the bottom, um, resistance at the top, 
Once support is broken, then support becomes resistance. Once the market comes back to retest that level, you can enter short. So just for example, we have two reasons to enter a trade here because we have one, the third touch of a trend line, and two, um, a retest of support now that has now become resistance, right? So your stop loss could go either two places above the support and resistance level and above the trend line, right? Usually stop losses, like a minimum um, distance for stop loss would be like 30 pips, enough space for it to breed. Or you can put your stop loss above the um, previous high, previous lower high because you're expecting the trend to, to maintain its structure, right? And if the trend makes a new high, then we know that it's no longer a downtrend because we had a break of market structure, right? So scenario two, right, is, is similar to um, a break in support and resistance, right? Essentially, when the market comes for that third bounce, right, you might be expecting it to um, break the trend line because the confluences you have add up to um, a break of uh, market structure. So you're expecting the market to reverse for whatever reason, right? Sometimes it could be, this might be, let's say this is the four hour time frame. However, on the daily and weekly time frame, you, you've gotten to a significant resistance level and you're expecting the market to react off of that time frame. So when you drop down to the lower time frame, you would be expecting a break of structure, right? So how this plays out, just like um, a break of support and resistance, you wait for the market to break the level, right? And once the market comes back and retests the trend line, then um, you would go short, right? So here in this example, you would go short on the retest of the trend line, right? You press, place your stop loss above the previous high. If you're um, trying to be conservative, um, if um, you can also place your stop loss above the broken trend line, right? Because you're expecting now the market to make a new trend that will continue down, right? Your target would probably be the, the, the last um, support and resistance level, or you can leave your target open, or you can aim for a higher time frame support and resistance level, right? Um, yeah, so you know when it comes to trend lines, there's two ways you could go about it. You could either expect a break, or you can expect a bounce, right? You have to be ready to make that trading decision, right? So back to the um the chart we had here. So um essentially when you're in the market, you have to be always adjusting your trend line to the most recent market data, right? So let's play this out. So boom, we have a low right we have a high right we have a low high and we have a high high now the reason why this is the lower high is because this this um previous high was um broken right or surpassed as you can see all right so what we do we draw our trend line and we extend it out, right? Okay, boom. The market came down. Third touch. Rewind it a little. So right here now, I was running this too fast. Okay, boom. So the touch, a lot of the times the market won't, um, well, we get near the zone. So you have to think of it as an area. You can't expect it to touch this one thin line, right? The market isn't some um, organic rule follower, 
right? So if it comes near the zone, you know, if it surpasses the zone a little bit, you know, you would, you would, you would take that trade, right? Your trend line is only considered broken when you have an entire candle closed on the other side of that trend line, right? So when you have a, 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 a candle body and wick on the other side of the trend line, then you consider the trend line um, broken, right? Remember that rule. Okay, so what we're just doing is going along on the third touch of the trend line. Our stop loss below the trend line, our target. Let's first, for example, target this um, resistance level right here, right? Okay, boom. Our target got hit. All right. Also, the market now created a new high, right? Because it surpassed this previous high right here. So now we have to adjust our trend line, but it's still this, it's still almost the same, right? So we press play and then we know we wait um, for a third touch, right? So here we have a third touch of the trend line. Right, so we do. We buy in this scenario, we would put our stop loss under the previous high, right? Because obviously, um, the market is kind of close to the previous high. So, in this scenario, um, you could put it um, under the previous high, right? You still the risk is still small, right? Um, for your target. You would probably target the next support and resistance level, which would, which would be here and also here, right? So let's just put it right here, <clears throat> right? Our first trade was 135 pips, so I'll just write 100 and, 135 right here. Okay, we have the market reacting, right? Okay, so now the market made a new high, right? So what we do, we adjust our trend line, right? We're still in this trade, stop loss probably at break even, so we're not risking anything, right? Okay, so the market came down for a third touch, right? So if we didn't get in on the first trade, we'd probably get in here. Stop loss below the previous high. Target, you can either target this level or this level, right? Keep in mind, the market has not made a higher high yet. So you cannot adjust your trend line and um, put it here, right? You have to wait for the market to make a higher high in order to um, adjust your trend line, right? So your trend line is still valid, right? Okay, so right here, we get stopped up. Now the market did come up. Um, we should have, we should have, remember what I said before, right? Usually the first target is the last high. So this should have been our first target, right? And that was also the most recent support and resistance level, right? But what happened here now, um, the market came up came down, now it broke the trend line. The trend line is officially broken, right? When did the trend line break? The trend line broke with um, this candle right here, right? Because this was the candle to close entirely on the other side of the trend line. These candles tapped it, but this was the candle to close entirely on the other side of the trend line, right? 
So now, um, what we do, we, um, we adjust the trend line if we stick into the rules, and this would be our new trend line, right? Because now we had a breaker market structure, right? So we, what we would do, we continue um, monitoring the market and watching as the patterns develop, right? Okay, so if we stick into the rules, I have no idea how this is gonna play out, right? I just I just follow in the trend line loops, right? Um, target would be down here, but you know you can. And this was this was the this is the most previous support and resistance level here also. So we probably have a target right here also, right? Stop loss above um previous highs, right? Okay, we just stopped it on that tree. So what we do now? We yeah, adjust our trend line, right? So now um, we have to zoom out and see, okay, this was the last um, high, and now this is the last lower high because the market just made a, um, a higher high, right? So this is how you would draw your trend line. You draw it from the previous um, lower high, and extend it out, right? Because this would be the previous high high. All of this would be up to that, right? So we stick into the rules, you know, we just stick into one confluence, right? And we're just testing it out to see if it, um, to see how the market reacts to it. Now, we can't draw any um, trend lines here yet. You cannot adjust it because the market has not made a low low or made a high high, right? Um, so what would some people would do, they would probably connect these two points, right? And call that dynamic support and resistance, right? Basically, the market made a sharp move at these levels, right? That, that just indicates that it has, it has some money played around there, right? But it would not be a valid trend line, right? Remember, this is the daily chart. Okay, so now um, we could draw a trend line, like, trend line like this, right? And we would wait for that um, that third touch. Um, sometimes like if you feel like okay this kind of looks like a pullback because this just looks this just looks like um consolidation right there's a difference between consolidation and a pullback right this just looks like consolidation so you know it's, it's difficult to say whether this was a lower high or not whenever you're in the market and you, f you feel like it's not easy. You feel like the patterns is, it's, 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 when you're trading, the patterns should be clear as day. As soon as you need to start second guessing a pattern and you're not sure, then the best thing you could do is just leave it alone, right? And then wait for the pattern to actually be clear as day, right? So, um, when I meet a scenario like this and I'm not, and I'm actually not sure what to do, I would just test it out. I would draw the trend line like this and see how the market reacts. And every time that, that happens, I won't place any trades or anything, but anytime that happens, I would just make a note of it to see, okay, does this work or doesn't it work? You know? All right, so we've gotten to um, we've gotten to today's date, so there's no more candles. Um, we didn't get to see a break and retest scenario, so I'm checking to see if there's any right. 
So we had a few trend changes here. So let's just go back and see if we um, see if we would get a break and retest scenario, right? Okay. All right, so draw a trend line. All right, so you draw a trend line, All right? You might make a high high. We yeah, adjust our trend line. All right, so um, let's see. Um, here we had the market break the trend line, but we didn't get an entire candle close on the other side, right? So if we had an entire candle close on this side here, then we could have taken this retest, right? Because this was a retest. But if we stick into the rules, then we wouldn't have gotten that trade, right? So now what we could do, we draw, um, we draw that trend line now. And what I do sometimes whenever the trend line is broken, I just make, I just make it a dotted line, right? Okay, so here we had um, this trend line broken, right? The market came down, it retested it, but um, it went deep inside, right? And you have to remember, you're not just gonna be using this one confluence. Okay, so here we had um, trend line um, break. Basically with this candle here that closed completely on the other side. We had this candle here almost closing completely on the other side, right? So, like I said before, um, this is a support and resistance example. When would you expect support and resistance to be broken, right? This is a sign that your support and resistance level is going to be broken. Basically, you have a trend. You have a trend line, right? That trend line is broken right here. That's an indication to you that we might be going into a downtrend, right? That's an indication to you that the bears are in the market now. So when the market comes down to your support and resistance level, this is where you expect um, this level to be broken, right? So here, we had the level broken, right? Here we had um, a little retest of this um, candle, right? We had an entire candle form on the other side. We had a little retest right here, right? Okay, so now we can draw a trend line here, right? Okay, now we can adjust our trend line, right? Okay, boom. So we had a trend line break, entire candle on the other side. Here we had a retest, right? Let me see how it's gonna go. We could probably put our stop loss below the um the um previous high, target the previous um target the previous support resistance level right here. 
Now, some people might say this is support and resistance, right? I would say you can't trust it because it was too much consolidation. The move wasn't the move was not sharp. So that doesn't that doesn't tell me that um, there's a lot of money there, right? Money moves the market. So when you have sharp moves, you know there's money there, right? Even though you might get a reaction, but um, the confluences um, is more on your side when you have that sharp move, right? All right, so what we have here, the market reacted to the level. It formed a higher high. When that happens now, you yeah, adjust your trend line, right? Because we take in the most recent highs, right? Now, you had the market um, form a candle on the other side. That's telling you, like I said before, okay, the market looks like it's gonna go on a down, all right? Because you have a trend line broken. So once your trend line broken, you're obviously expecting um, your support and resistance levels to be broken, right? So we could draw this level here. I think we, we did all of this already, right? But yeah, so this was your example of um, a break and retest of um, trend line. Right? So, as a trader, you would, every time frame has its own trend line. Right? You want to know where all the time frame trend lines are at. So, when you're analyzing the market, you start from the monthly. And you draw the monthly trend line, right? Which should be here. Right? You go to the weekly and you say, okay, um, well, the weekly and the monthly trend line is just about the same, right? So you could leave it. You go to the daily and you draw your daily trend line. Right. And you go to the four hour, you draw your um, four hour trend line. Right, market came there. You could even go to the one hour. And add in your one hour trend line. Right? So the latest one hour trend line, it looks something like this the last low, the last low highs. And then we also have a return right here, All right? So um, that's a, a, a breakdown of um, trend lines. It's your job to go and um, practice this, right? So, okay, let's, let's go on the map. This would also be a monthly trend line. Why? Um, let's see. We had the move down, right? We had the pullback. We had the lower low, right? And now this is the third touch. And you can see that we had a little reaction. Right? We had a little reaction. Monthly trend line plus support and resistance level. Two reasons, two simple reasons why you could go short here. Right, so it's all about just adding up your confluences, adding up where you learned, right? Um, but yeah, let's get into Fibonacci real quick. Fibonacci is very simple. It's a very simple tool. You just have to learn um, how to use it, right? So we know that price is 
stacked up. And basically, within the monthly candle, you had a weekly candle, you had a daily candle, you had a four hour candle, and whatnot, right? The Fibonacci tool is a tool we use to measure um, an impulse in the market, measure a pullback, right? To anticipate when is that pullback going to be um, over. It's also a confidence, right? So, and it is also a ratio. Let me just look up the Fibonacci sequence. So this is what the Fibonacci sequence look like, looks like, right? So they call it the golden ratio. Um, the 61.8 level in the forex, we call it the golden ratio, right? Um, I can't really explain too much about the Fibonacci sequence, but it's basically a sequence of numbers that um spiral down into into something whatever you know you can look this up on your own but what happened what it has to do with forex well this sequence of numbers um it tends to to repeat itself within the, the trends of the market right so let me just explain what, what the fibonacci um tool is made up of it's made up of several levels so I've picked out my um my most useful levels, but um there's more, right? So there's the one hundred percent. Let's say this is okay. Let's say this is an uptrend, right? There's one hundred percent and there's zero percent. Basically, when you draw in the tool, you draw it from the previous low to the high, right? So you draw it from 100% of that um, impulse, right? Because we know this is the pullback and this is the impulse, right? So you draw the Fibonacci tool on that um, impulse, right? And that would be 100%. From the bottom would be 100 to the top would be zero, right? So now when it pulls back, it measures how much percent did it pull back off that impulse, right? That's why it has 100, that's why it has zero. So we have the halfway point, which is 50%. We have 32, um, 38.2, right? And then we have 61.8, which is a golden ratio, right? And then we have... Um, negative 27, all right? So let me tell you what these numbers mean. When the trend is strong, when the trend is aggressive, we expect pullbacks to the 32.8, right? That's where we expect our pullbacks to be at. Now, the market, based on historical data, the market tends to pull back to 32.8 and 61, 61 point, I mean 38.2 and 61.8 a lot, right? So those are the numbers we mainly look out for. Um, some professional traders, when they have their Fibonacci tools, they just only have the 38.2 and the 61.8 on, right? So when the trend is aggressive, you expect a short brief pullback. So you only expect the market to pull back to the 8%, right? When you have a normal healthy trend, you would expect the market to pull back to the 61.8, right? The 61.8 is called the golden ratio for several reasons. And when it has to do with Forex, well, the market just likes that number. If you back test it, you would see that the market tends to come to that number a lot. For, um, and the, the, the confluences tend to align around that number, right? So um, when you're executing trades, you look for confluences to align here. If they do, 
then that's re that's that's reasons to enter. And if they do, then that's reasons to enter, right? The negative twenty-seven. Well, that um number. That number tends to be the take profit level. Essentially, when a, when these institutions or these traders place trades in the market, their target is usually at that um, 20, um, negative 27, right? So what you would expect um, when you place a trade, you would target negative 27 too, because what, what tends to happen is as soon as the market gets to negative 27, the market pulls back, right? And then you draw your um your new Fibonacci, and then the market tends to pull back to your sixty one point one, sixty one point eight, or your thirty two, right? And then so the cycle continues, right? Very very simple tool. I don't use it that often. But um, essentially, you want to draw it from the um, the and on uptrend, the high lows to the high to the high highs, and then a downtrend, the lower highs to the lower lows, right? And then what you would look out for if the trend is aggressive, you would look out for the market to retrace to the 38.2, or you would look for the market to retrace to the sixty one point eight, right? So what we're gonna do, we are going to back test this to see if it makes sense, right? Okay, so we have the market going down. Market made a little low, okay, and the market starts to pull back, right? The thing about the Fibonacci too, you have to draw it when you feel like the market is um making a pullback, right? So um you have a look at the trend. You see, okay, the trend looks aggressive, so maybe you can anticipate um the, the market to touch the 38.2. But then also you have to be aware that, okay, we have a support and resistance level here, which is also near the 61.8. So then you have two confluences to enter near the 61.8, right? But well, we're just gonna press play and see which one it gets to. Okay, so in this example, it was a 38.2, all right? So we're gonna continue and see how it plays out. Okay, boom. Like I said previously, the target usually be um, negative 27. So now let's see if um, what the theory suggests, right? The theory suggests that people tend to take profits at negative 37. So then you can expect a pullback at that level, right? And also, you can also draw like a little mini, mini, um, little mini Fibonacci there because we had a little trend going on right a little um okay so you see we had consolidation here the reason why we had a lot of profit taken maybe investors didn't close the entire position but because we had a lot of profit taken we had a little you know stall in the market right I'm going to add the negative 61.8 because that's also a profit taken level right okay so negative 61.8 is also a profit taken level you can see that the market did react to it right so what we learn in here is not um it's not total bs so we could draw our new um fibonacci let's take out the old one and for this pullback, we see that the market came near the level, right? Now you also have to think of these levels as zones. The market, the, the market is not perfect, like I said before, so they, 
it, it would come close to us doing our level and not actually touch it, but then it would still be considered as a valid um, touch, right? So let's press, let's, let's press play and um, see what happens. So here, um, we could have draw Fibonacci here, but we wasn't sure whether if this was a, um, a pullback from this impulse. So now that the market made a higher high, um, we know it's an uptrend now, so then we look for Fibonacci levels, right? So sometimes you could draw it like this. If you're not sure, um, you can have Fibonacci's within Fibonacci's in a sense. So if you feel like, okay, yes, this is two impulses on the daily time frame, but on the weekly time frame, it might just be one. So this could possibly be a weekly Fibonacci with the market pulling back, right? All right, um, what you would do here, what you would have done was you would have drawn it your yeah, Fibonacci level like this. Obviously the market did not respect it. So they just press play and continue, right? Okay, we just follow in the rules, right? We have drawn a Fibonacci level like this because it's a downtrend. We can see the market reacting off the 38.2. So sometimes as a trader, you might just when you when you see the market approaching approaching the 38.2, you might drop down a few time frames and try to get um, a trade on the one hour or the four hour, right? Basically, this 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 these these candles consolidating here is in a 100 pip range. So if you were to go short at the 38.2, you would be able to still get 100 pips, right? We're gonna continue. Okay, so now we have a, a low, a low. We draw Fibonacci from the, the lower high to the lower low. Okay, so. Just like what we was doing with the trend lines before, we yeah, adjust, right? Here we had the market react to 38.2. Let's keep press and play and see. Um, okay, so we see that the market pulling back, so we adjust our trend line, right? I mean, our Fibonacci. And see if it, it reacts to the 61.8 or the um, 38.2. Okay, so here we had the market reacting to the 61.8, right? And you know, the power of trading a higher time frame, you catch bigger moves. So if you were to make a trading decision here because you're on the daily time frame and you entered this trade, you would have been up like 214 pips, right? So this is why a lot of the times you might see me sending um, trades that's on the daily time frame, but you just have to be more patient with them, right? Okay, so we see the market starting to pull back. So we do, we, we, we draw our, our Fibonacci tool, right? And here the market reacted. It reacts off the 50 level as well, but not as much as the um, 61.8, right? Aaron, you're gonna have to watch over this video. But yeah. Um, Here we had almost 100% retracement. 
But you know what you can do in the meantime? Just go and um, look up Fibonacci too. Oh, we're going to do draw the, the um, Okay, so here we had a reaction of the 61.8, right? Um, if you had gone long here, it would have been up 120 pips. Your target, well, the market would have smashed through your targets, right? 300 pips to 30 pips, right? So, we would have done here, um, draw near Fibonacci 2 again, and now we're at present day, right? So, we have the market reacting to 61.8. So, here's the idea based off the Three confluences we reviewed today, right? So both on resistance, trend line, and um, Fibonacci too. Here's how you would find your setup using these tools. Simple. You would um, let's say you find a trend, right? You would draw your um, Fibonacci, right? You would draw your support and resistance, right? And then you would draw your trend line. Now, having all these three confluences lined up in one area, you have three reasons why you should go along here. You would learn more, you know, but just based on what we did today, you have three reasons why you would go long here. And that is called having the odds in your favor, having a high probability setup, right? Because you want the probabilities in your favor, you want the odds in your favor, so you want the confluences in your favor, right? For you to make that trading decision. Now, I'm pretty sure I could find an example. Let me see if we can find an example of that exact um, scenario, right? Mm. So let's take this um, Fibonacci level right here. And okay, we did not have the trend line. No, we did not have the trend line um, for this one, right? So here we have a low, a higher low, and a lower low, right? On the higher time frame, it's, it's just gonna look like this. High, low, pull back, right? And this is a pull back right here. So we had the market bounce off the 61.8, right? Which was also aligned with the support and resistance level, right? Mm. Yeah.
assume you we are watching a higher time frame here. We have um sixty one point eight. We have our trend line right here. All right, two reasons to go long right here. We have support and resistance. All right. If you want help identifying your support and resistance levels, just go on our line chart. And wherever you see the sharpest point is probably a support and resistance level, right? So let's say you took this trade with these three confluences here. And if you find those three confluences on a higher time frame, then that's even more reason, right? This would have been a 250 pip trade. So um, that is, we've been, we've been on here for like an hour and two minutes. So I've been getting complaints. Oh, my video is too long. My class is too long. I should make it shorter. But whatever. It's an hour. You know. Can't rush the, can't rush the class. Anyways. Um, this was a review of support and resistance, a review of trend lines. And an introduction into um, Fibonacci sequence, right? I'm going to put this 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 video um, on YouTube tonight. So if you missed the class or you came late, you could definitely watch it. And what you should do if you were in the class um, and you knew, look over the video. I make notes because what tends to happen, um, I, I, I make a lot of points while teaching, right? And those points are usually stuff people write down on the screen. So, you know, it's like little notes, but you can take it upon yourself to write, to write the notes, you know, so that it's, it's in your head. So for example, um, when should you enter a trend line? When should you enter on a trend line on the third touch, right? Um, how to draw a trend line, you connect the two previous lower highs, I mean, lower highs if it's an uptrend, the two latest lower highs if it's an uptrend, or the two latest, no, no, if it's a downtrend. And if it's an uptrend, it's the two latest higher lows, right? When um, the market approaches the trend line for the third touch, you'd be anticipating a break up bounce scenario, right? If the market breaks the, can, the trend line, the market breaks the trend line when an entire candle closes on the other side. And how would you enter that trade? You wait for the market to come back and you test the trend line, right? And you know, things like that, you just, you make notes of it so that it, it just becomes second nature, all right? Um, yeah, so we're going we gonna, to we gonna lock it up right here. Um, have a good night. I wish you the best this week in the markets, right?